<laughs> I did the same thing with Gomer Pyle. There was like a recording is up streaming up. There was a weekend um, hi stream uh, uh, <laughs> marathon going on, and I I was kept watching. I was like, I wonder where is uh, Gomer actually from? You know, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch too much. He wants the yeah. backstory. Full Metal Jacket has yeah. completely ruined Gomer Pyle for me. Private Pyle. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, Brian. <laughs> Full metal jacket. <laughs> Chuck, did you see the picture I posted of you? Who? Me? Yeah, on Facebook. No. Everybody's loving it. <laughs> Except for you. Did you tag me? I did. All it right, says I'll with, look later. With we're, we're streaming right now. It's the it's the good idea, bad idea. Good idea, bad idea. I haven't seen it yet. I'll look. The awkward hug? The awkward hug? Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to have to take your word for it. <laughs> okay. Apparently, we have a live video going. Okay. Sure. Maybe you can pull, up, pull it up on the live video. Sure. <laughs> Mute. Hosting as me. Sunday night. <laughs> So did everybody, did, did all y'all get to watch Star Trek? We have not. Okay. But Chuck and Donna did. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, we'll, we'll survive. Oh, we're no, not going to no. do spoilers here. We're going to save that for the Star Trek podcast. Yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> I will say, though, it's pretty evident that this is, you can tell this is the beginning of the season. Yeah. Where after watching it, it was like, okay, this is where it starts. First two were really like a... Julie's big, watching! Her log. Hi, Julie. It's the only way she gets to talk to her parents anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they won't take her calls, but she can join the live feed. The court, the court order doesn't cover Facebook video. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share. Come on, share, share, share on my timeline. Not, why does it ask me, do you want to, uh, when I go to share something off Technorama, the Technorama page, it says share, share. on a page you manage. Technorama podcast. I'm like, well, that's pointless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't get any visibility. <laughs> Good save. We're going to begin in just a in moment it. if anyone else is watching. I've been I've been sharing our videos every Sunday night with a with a lyric out of a song. It doesn't tell you how many people are watching. Or maybe no one's watching, so it doesn't make us feel bad. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> interesting. Interesting. We'll see if it changes later. You ready to rock and roll? Craig. He's thinking real hard. His video is right there. What happened? Was I was on Wi-Fi and I changed it over to my Ethernet. That's oh, what I was okay. looking. We got to get the camera there. I was going to say we got to get the... <laughs> Boy, what, I we forget to shave. Night, it's not, nighttime to I don't dawn. look terrible until... Uh, Look into a, like the webcam here with a little bit of <laughs> darkness. It's like wow, you can really tell. <laughs> try try a close up like, on 1080p. That's what I was doing a couple of weeks ago. I I got this thing all framed up and the green screen and the lighting. Recorded it. Finally got all the shadows. Looked at it on on you know instead of on the phone. Looked at it on the laptop. Went oh my! I forgot to shave. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Kim's been out of town. It's been a long weekend, man. <laughs> Work from home. Sometimes you forget. <laughs> well, I usually go every other day anyway. It's been, sometimes three days, two or three days, because who am I? I'm, I'm married. No, I don't have work from home. So, <laughs> so a little, so little tough to... <laughs> dragging the razor across two or three days stubble. I know. That's, that's a little tough. Only do that with a very new razor. Anyway, we are we are way off topic. <laughs> we're, we're the topic just... is Technorama. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought it was Craig's beard. Craig's beard. Yeah. Right. Odin's you beard. Could... <laughs> Might change the title of the show. <laughs> All right. Shall we begin? <sighs> yeah. Refreshing. Hey, don't forget to put that uh that Klaxon spoiler alert thing I made um f on your soundboard for the topic is Trek. Where'd you put it? Did you put it in the sounds folder? Um, I think I did. If I didn't, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in there. Okay. I don't want to put it somewhere where I can get to it. 
I don't remember. Just drag and drop at that point. Okay, let us begin. We are already streaming, so let's start the show. Technorama episode 517, not on my smartwatch. <laughs> Good morning, folks. This is your captain speaking. Technorama. Remember when? Tech, tech, technorama. On this day in tech history. Tech, tech. And now, the news. Tech. What the chuck? Technorama. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Say, I'm having some trouble assembling this IKEA furniture. Is there some place I can throw it away? Over there, in the media corner. Technorama. Hold my beer and watch this. Unfasten your seatbelts and disregard all safety rules. Here, your flight crew, Chuck and Craig. Welcome to Technorama, the show that takes a lighthearted look at tech, science, sci fi, and all things geek. If this is your first time joining us, hey, thanks. Welcome aboard. If you're returning, well, you know what to do. Buckle up. The fun begins here. Keep your hands and feet inside the ride at all times. We appreciate you coming back. I am Chuck Tomasi, and with me, as always, is Craig Stepp. How are you, Craig? I'm feeling frisky. Um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, let me explain. The weather's changed here, so it's like cooler. The humidity's finally going away. We've had three months, at least, of mid to high humidity. So You live in the was, South. What right. do you expect? I expect fall to hurry up and get here, and it finally did. <laughs> It's October 1st. <laughs> this is being recorded on October 1st, which means today mm-hmm. is 101. Right? Okay. Yep. That went over like a <laughs> lead balloon. <laughs> also joining me in the binary studio are Jack Mangan. Hello. I, I, feel, I feel a little uncomfortable if, uh, with Craig's friskiness, but uh, yeah. happy to hey, be baby. here. <laughs> and Tiffany, his wife. Hey, how's everybody doing? And congratu- congratulations, <laughs> Tiffany. Thanks. Thank and Jack. You. And, and Jack. You, know, Jack. You, had some, you had something to do with it. Yeah, had to do with it. They are <laughs> halfway through their baby making. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Well, the, baby, the, the baby's through. made. The baby's just cooking. <laughs> yeah. right. gotcha. That'd be an awkward episode. Yes. <laughs> Fun in the oven. Right. <laughs> right you have to come back on the show when it's time. When is the due date? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, mid-February. All right. And as, as uh, Tiffany said, she's starting the child out right by... Putting a prenatal on Technorama. Right. That's right. Yep. That that kid's going to be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we time it right with Facebook Live, and if they come on the show in mid February, could be an interesting show. That's true. It'd be. be very memorable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as wow. we have the live stream going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not live streaming someone's birth. I'm sorry. I, no, I didn't even record my own kid's birth. <laughs> And that was momentous enough for me. We have some feedback, some answers to previous questions. Previous questions? Letters. Do, do, oh, do, we do, get do. letters. We get your letters every day. Mailman, mailman, mail today. Reach right Reach in, right and, in and drink up. Those letters. I love those letters. Let's find out what you've got to oh, say. Oh, boy. I never noticed that little desk bell in there before. What? There's a little ding in there. How long, how long have you been listening to that thing? <laughs> Years? I thought I knew every nuance of every song we play, but nope. There's always Here's something the, to learn. What, did, did you I, even hear the dog barking? <laughs> There's a dog in there? Shut See? up. <laughs> now, come on. It's, it's blue. See, that reminds me of Blue's Clues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a big paw print. Did you hear the paw print in there? <laughs> Mail time. <laughs> We're singing the song of mail time. We have some feedback because I believe it was uh, one of our previous, was it a Patreon show? We were talking about anime? Yes. yes. Last, one, last week. Well, for this is for all the people last time. who listen to our Patreon show. If you want to know more about that, we'll tell you how to become a Patreon member and get a hold of that content. Mad Mar was kind enough to send back. He said, I think I heard you ask about anime recommendations in the last Patreon episode. I think you should see... Macross Plus. Sounds like an iPhone. If you are familiar with the Robotech cartoon from the 80s, all you need to know is that it takes place in the world in a future time. 
I thought I said furniture time. Oh, okay. That was, <laughs> makes more sense. No, that, you're still hung up on the Ikea reference from the top <laughs> yeah. of the show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if you never saw Robotech, it's one of the original giant robot cartoons that model, molded Japanese sci-fi the way Star Wars and Star Trek molded American sci-fi. The animation in this miniseries was one of the earliest to use computers. I don't think you can call it CGI because... Macross Plus was released in 1994, and therefore computers were probably running Windows 3.0. <laughs> or the Amiga. You know, like, wasn't that what uh, Babylon 5 used? I know the, oh, the, maybe. The it could be. <laughs> you A lot can of things use the Amiga. You can stream the series on Amazon for about six bucks. I really haven't seen it offered anywhere else, and he provides a link in the show notes that you can follow All through right. to. Thank you very much. I will definitely take a look. And then uh, we asked the question last week, what is the greatest animated show ever? And we have some answers from Twitter. We'll go there first. We have Twitter and Facebook answers. <laughs> you know, I, I, I realized that we're getting responses on, te- on Twitter, and I don't think we've been very religious about checking for those responses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I that's apologize true. for all those of you who may have responded to our question. I didn't realize that when you posted to Facebook, it automatically cross-posted to Twitter. So thanks for setting that oh. up, Craig. But I yeah. and I apologize to anyone who has responded in the past. We will well, do better. You're welcome, in the and I forgot. <laughs> so, I forgot I... Well, before I read these, Jack, what is your quote unquote greatest animated show ever? Well, I chimed in on Facebook, so I don't want to answer now. Oh, okay. No, I, I, you want to read your own <laughs> response there? <laughs> um, sure. But you know, I'll, my lovely wife actually did not chime in on this, so I'll let oh, her. Oh, <laughs> Tiffany. Yeah, I have to say, uh, Voltron is definitely high high ranking for me. Uh, definitely for sure. I do not agree that the new Ultra Voltron um, <laughs> is on that same par as the 1980s version. But what is it about Voltron that that sparks your interest um i think that one of there's a girl one of the five lions is a girl okay i think as a kid that was a big deal and um you know they work together as a team and they go and and save the universe i don't know i remember there was always there was the fat guy there was a little kid there was a girl (laughs) (laughs) i don't know you just had your goofy bunch of kids is it the is it the um what's the what's the term the the romanticism of you know, growing up with that cartoon? No, I don't think so. I think it's a little more simple than that. I think it was just a fun show. Okay. I thoroughly, like I never missed an episode of Voltron and I was so excited to watch the new Voltron when it came out and we watched, I don't know, three or four episodes and I just couldn't do it. It's terrible. <laughs> We're also big fans of Pacific Rim. Yes, so we are big fans uh, of Pacific Rim. Anything giant fighting robots. <laughs> yep. Yes, robot yes. jocks. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Pacific when when we, I took Harrison to see uh, uh, Pacific Rim, that's probably the first time he really saw giant robots fighting. And I looked over at him, and if he smiled anymore, he was going to swallow his ears. <laughs> that was it a was, fun movie. That was, just a, that was a fun movie. We have a message from Indiana Jim, who says, Why the longest-running, most oft-referenced, often-imitated, ever-recreated, legendary among more generations than any other Looney Tunes. I'm, I'm going to have to put that right up there on my list because I, I grew yes. up with a lot of Looney Tunes and they definitely had an impact on my sense of humor. <laughs> you yeah, you that. do have a Bugs Bunny uh, air about you. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Beckwith writes in and he says, The Simpsons! And that is a common answer we got from a lot of people as well. And I, I don't know if it's, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of people that were, were, were elaborating because we didn't say why on this one. But uh, from Facebook, we have Ed Flynn said Rocky and Bullwinkle. I'll grant you, that was, yes. that, that's a good one from the, the, you know, the intellectual and humor standpoint. It's something that kids can laugh at as well as adults. And that's what I found as well when talking to other people. They said, you know, there's, there's something about, you know, the cartoons where mom and dad and the kids can sit down and they all get something out of it. Uh, Richard Parkman says, Old Dungeons and Dragons is a favorite of mine. Pretty adult stories. Maybe that's why I remember so well. Okay. Uh, Matt Baum says, I'm partial to Futurama for the fact that they managed to work so much emotion into a cartoon. I was going to say Futurama as well for the intellectual factor. You know, they, they had... Yeah. 
they had they had humor in there that it was almost like XKCD where it's funny if you're in that genre there was Bart. There was the, you know, where they were switching bodies. You know, Binder yes. would go into Farnsworth, Farnsworth would go into Amy, and and they had to get everybody back, but you can't go back to a body that you previously had. There was actually an equation they had to solve to do that show. <laughs> it's like really bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Scott Stephanie Long says, based on longevity, you would have to say Simpsons. If it were based on longevity alone, that would be a good assumption. So, yes. Actually, I gave up on The Simpsons a few years ago. Uh, John Miller Jr. says Disney's Gargoyles gets my vote. And Lone Guy's Night says 1990's <laughs> The Tick. The Tick. Uh, my answer's hmm. not here then. I guess I okay, answer it somewhere else. Oh, I wonder about, if you about you? if you went on a share. Let's see. We have it shared by me. I wonder if you responded to my share. Uh, apparently people who shared this. Me. <laughs> well, Jack, you're there. Why don't you just tell us? <laughs> no, I'm waiting until it comes up on the screen. <laughs> All right, yeah, while we're, while we're doing this to defeat the dead air, yeah, basically, I <laughs> I also said, um, I, I, Looney Tunes, is, yeah, that's what it was called back in the day. For me, growing up on Saturday mornings, it was the Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner show. So I, that was one of my answers. Classic Simpsons, I said, because I've lost touch with the Simpsons over the years. And also, you know, the, the Charlie Brown series, the Peanuts, all those specials. That, that's, you know, that's as good as it gets to me. You know, I, I totally forgot about the holiday specials. That is a good answer as well. It, yeah. Whether it was the the stop action or the the animated peanuts kind of thing, that was a lot of fun. We're gonna have to do better got, at coordinating I'll, our I'll, links. I'll give you, I'll give you two answers. Okay. All right. So, well, I I love Looney Tunes as well. So it's hard, it's almost impossible to to not throw that one out there. But uh, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> there was a time where I would have said that, but as I get older, uh, not well, so much. Actually, Ren and Stimpy is probably another one oh, yeah. uh, I think is pretty important because it, it sparked my imagination just thinking how absurd the some of the stories were. Like Powdered Toast, man, you know, yes. the characters <laughs> that throw together, it's like yes. weird and crazy. Uh, so, yes, I, I love that. Now, if we're talking about shows as in, does it have to be serial, like TV show, or can it be a movie? If it was a movie, I would say Heavy Metal. Hmm. Why heavy metal? Uh, I, I've seen that over and over and over, and even recently. Well, some of the animation was, you know, it had a, a a little serious slant to it, and some of it a little bit not so much. But it all had this kind of air, even though it was several artistic styles with the anthology, you know, the several stories that were in the yeah. movie. Um, they all had this kind of, I don't know, just kind of air about it, and they all shared that same kind of air, like a little mystery because that orb was kind of part of the story a to a degree. Time. And so I loved it. I don't know. Just, uh, okay. I don't yeah. Just, the maybe the time and place I saw it. I don't know. Just, but, uh, I thought it was, it was pretty cool. The way it kind of had that Alice in Wonderland. What LSD trip was somebody on when they <laughs> wrote this to me? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy yeah. it, but it's, it's one of those yeah. things like listening to Pink Floyd, where it probably makes more sense when you're drunk or high. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the Loch Nahr. Remember the, the Loch Nahr. It's my Loch Nahr. Yeah, it's my Loch Nahr. Yeah, <laughs> classic. All righty, Craig, get your D twenty out. It's time for the history thing. Wait a minute. What was Jack's? What was Jack's thing? We said we said that. Yeah, he had the peanuts cartoon, cartoon yeah, and the peanuts. Cartoon. Oh, the peanuts. Oh, that's Actually, right. Yeah. Oh, bad roll. Oh, that's even worse. Mine hit the side of the table, so I had to re-roll. Did you roll, Craig? He's trying to. Oh my God. Gotta dig it out of his backpack. I'm just. I got a critical miss. <laughs> Roll the natural one. Oh no! You get a I paper roll? cut and die. <laughs> Tiffany, right, you did you roll? I I did. I got ten. All right. What does that do for me? Well, we're going from highest to lowest. Craig. Okay, okay Google. Roll a twenty-sided die. <laughs> oh dang it! What did it say? Six. <laughs> okay, it's going Tiffany, Craig, Chuck, Jack. Okay, so around the screen as we see it counterclockwise. <laughs> we got to do something who? that makes right. sense. Okay. Who do, who do I follow? <laughs> Me. You follow Tiffany. Okay. We got, got we got really low rolls this week. Okay, <laughs> so I'll read the first line, and then this one is yours, Tiffany. Okay? okay? Yep. 
All right, here we go. It's getting harder to coordinate every week. On this day in history for September 27th. No, it's October 4th. Who wrote this thing? You copy and pasted last week. Good thing I fixed this. (laughs) This is the 277th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are 88 days remaining in 2017. It was on this date in 1535 that the first complete English language Bible, the Coverdale Bible, is printed with translations by William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale. All right, is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte first rises to the national pro- to national prominence by suppressing armed counter-revolutionary rioters threatening the National Convention on the state in 1795. On October 4th, 1830, the provisional government of Belgium secedes from the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. Texas A&M University opens as the Agricultural and Mechanical College of Texas, becoming the first public institution of higher education in Texas on this date in 1876. It was 134 years ago today, that first run of the Orient Express. On October 4th, 1927, um... (laughs) Gollum got, got <laughs> Gollum got some Borglum got some Borglum uh, began sculpting Mount Rushmore. You gotta watch more history, man. <laughs> You're thinking of Mount Doom. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about. Doom. Right. He also had a hand in the Panama Canal. October fourth, nineteen fifty-seven, launch of Sputnik number one, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. Beep, beep. Is it still up there? Or did it fall down? I think it's been gone. Okay. Richard Noble sets a new land speed record of 633.468 miles per hour, 1,019,468 kilometers an hour, driving thrust two at the Black Rock Desert in Nevada on this date in 1983. Is that the scene from Buckaroo Banzai? Yes, it is. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It was on this date in 1985 that the Free Software Foundation is founded in Massachusetts, United States. Yay! Also on October 4th, 2004, Spaceship One wins the Ansari X Prize for private space flight by being the first private craft to fly into space. Yay! October 4th, 2006, WikiLeaks is launched by Julian Assange. I wonder if he ever regrets that. Right. Now that he's living in exile in the yeah. embassy in the middle of nowhere town. Is he still, is he still there? <laughs> he is still there. He can't come out or he'll be arrested. Great hair, though. He gets to st- yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> one of those people that probably wakes up with that great hair. Happy birthday goes out of the state to Danish <laughs> astronomer and author Christian Sorensen Longomontanus. Wow, that's a Longomontanus name. Huh. Born on this date in 1562. I guess it's me. Florence Eliza Allen, the American mathematician and suffrage activist, was born 141 years ago today. Also born eight, October 4th, 1895, American film actor, director, and producer, Buster Keaton. Hey! English reporter who secretly posed as a man to become a soldier in World War I died in 1964, Dorothy Lawrence, born on this date in 1896. John Vincent Atanasoff, the American physicist and academic, invented the Atanasoff Berry Computer... Oh, they sold a million of those. <laughs> I don't put that on my resume. He was born 114 oh, years ago today. Born October 4th, 1916. American comedian, actor, and game show host, Jan Murray. thought you were going to say Monty Hall for a second. but <laughs> Too soon. It's too, know, soon. too soon. Russian physicist and academic Nobel Prize laureate. Vitaly Ginsburg was born 101 years ago today. There's that number again. <laughs> Kenichi Fukui, (laughs) the Japanese chemist and academic Nobel Prize laureate, was born 99 years ago today. I was wondering how you're going to handle that last name there, Craig. (laughs) Fukui, you too. (laughs) American actor, director, and gun rights activist Charlton Heston was born this date in 1923. Listener birthdays on this week in October. October 6th, John Durholt, a.k.a. Joe Doe. October 9th has two birthdays. It's Suko Rumki. It sounds like Itsuko, which means I pronounced it right <laughs> Also, November, or excuse me, October 9th, Mario from New Jersey. 
Yeah. Our good friend and former fellow podcaster Victor Cahiao is on the 10th, as well as Garrett Rafal, who was born on October 10th as well. That's the way it was on, the, you know, we should tell you how to get on the birthday calendar. We missed our link in there. If you want to be on the birthday calendar, go over to chuckchat.com hmm. forward slash wiki, and we'll give you a shout out at the appropriate time of year. I know there are people still doing that. Appreciate it very much. I know there are people that did this, like, 10 years ago, and we still give them a shout out. You might want to take a tip from other people and not say, like, it's my 40th birthday this year, because you will be eternally 40 <laughs> on Technorama. Well, that... Hey, if take it as you will. You that's might what you want. <laughs> Your kid may also be 11 years old forever. I don't know if anybody wants an 11 year old forever. <laughs> I want to be 11 year old. Forever. That's the way it was on this day in history for October 4th, 2017. And here we go. Take us away, band. Do the dance, Chuck. There's a little xylophone in there, too. Are you just noticing this stuff for the first time? There's I'm listening to different attributes every time. What did you tune your hearing aids? What? <laughs> I got it really loud today. Those bionic implants are really doing you justice tonight. Well, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Guess what I got? <laughs> <laughs> right. We have some news. Good space news, everyone. Good news, everyone. And oh, it's too bad Michael's not here tonight. It's an Elon <laughs> Musk story. Oh, uh, I hope his he's watching. Crush. Hope he doesn't get jealous us talking about him. <laughs> Craig, would you like this story? <laughs> sure. So uh, Elon Musk proposes a city-to-city travel by rocket. Of course, he's in the rocket business, so of course he wants that. <laughs> um, but right here on Earth. So SpaceX CEO Elon Musk unveiled uh, revised plans to travel to the moon and Mars at a space industry conference today. Well, the other day. But he ended the talk with a pretty incredible promise. Using the same interplanetary rocket system for a long-distance travel, On uh, on he wants to use it on Earth uh, from a report. So Musk showed a, a demonstration of an idea on stage claiming that it will allow passengers to take most long-distance trips in just 30 minutes and go anywhere on Earth un- in under an hour for around the same price as an economy air ticket. Musk proposed using SpaceX's forthcoming mega rocket, codename BFR. BFR, yes. <laughs> no, what does that stand for? <laughs> Big effing rocket. That's that's yeah. honestly what it's... They, they did that on uh, the news story I was watching, too. They said, they call it BFR, something we can't pronounce here, but then they put a caption on there, Big F asterisk asterisk asterisk. <laughs> I was like, you did it. It's kind of funny. So I've, heard, I've heard of planes doing this before, and... If if I'm not mistaken, didn't the Concord do that where they would go up to a higher elevation and then kind of pivot? They weren't in space though. No, no, no. I know that. This I'm just is, saying they use that kind of sci-fi stuff. This reminds me of um, was it the Man in the High Castle that when there was on uh, Amazon they did rocket flying from mm-hmm. Germany to the West Coast, for example. Yeah. So what I'm just saying is they use higher elevation, but not necessarily space. So, um, so this is kind of cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to be like kind of rocket where they landed up straight up or like they do now. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't see any details on that. I, I also heard the announcement where he said that in seven years he's going to have uh, a manned mission to Mars. He's going to send humans to Mars by 2024. And the plans for that or, should yeah. be available yeah, that in the, the next article. nine to 12 months. So he's very aggressive on hey. this stuff. I'm sure those tickets aren't going to be the same as an economy airline ticket. Mm. <laughs> one, <laughs> one way trip. <laughs> I, I bet most people would take it. Have you heard that American Airlines is is removing two more inches of legroom on their flights? That's inhuman. Yeah, they showed it. Yep, they're taking. They're, they're moving. Making, they're they're squeezing the seats a little tighter. Yeah, by two inches. They had a oh, live boy. demonstration on a new show. It was incredible. <laughs> Guess what? Difference. Netbook computers are coming back, and you're going to type like a T Rex. <laughs> All right, I, I tried to open my laptop last time, and it was already too tight. Yeah, I I, it it, when, it barely gets vertical. Hmm. Yeah, you can only use really an iPad. Uh, pretty soon, you'd be tight too tight for that. Yeah. Right. Well, you have to use either an iPad Mini or your phone. <laughs> that's that's not right. 
Yeah. There ought to be a Geneva Convention against airlines <laughs> doing stuff like that. <laughs> Who, who'd you say was doing that? Americans, the first one. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And that's like, um, we're like a hub for that right. here in Charlotte. Or, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm screwed. Mm. Well, staying on the Elon Musk theme again. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> 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 He should be here to defend himself. You really so missed sorry. out this time, buddy. Yeah. I'm not sorry. <laughs> That'll teach you to cancel. <laughs> Jack, we have another story. This one's about Tesla. Would you care? Sure, I'll, I'll take it. Um, earlier this summer, Tesla CEO Elon Musk, never heard of him, he confirmed <laughs> yeah. rumors that Tesla's working on a fully autonomous ride-sharing taxi service to compete with Uber and Lyft. He described the concept in his master plan part Dieu. <laughs> you will also be able to add your car to the Tesla shared fleet just by tapping a button on the Tesla phone app and have it generate income for you while you're at work or on vacation, significantly offsetting and at times potentially exceeding the monthly loan or lease cost. With today's introduction of enhanced auto- autopilot features and fully self-driving hardware in all cars, Tesla released more information about the service, which is apparently calling Tesla Network on both their autopilot information page and their configuration page for new vehicle orders. Tesla has added a line about using a self-driving Tesla for car sharing and ride hailing, but doing so for revenue purposes will only be permissible on the Tesla network, details of which will be released next year. Uh, you want me to go on? There's, there's more. There's, well, this, makes, this is interesting. So in a way, I can see why he's doing this, because it will increase the likelihood somebody buys a Tesla, because the only way I'm going to afford it is if it earns its own keep. And this is one way to do that. So, mm-hmm. hey, I'm like at your work. Air, like, your, like your Airbnb? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's sitting there not doing anything. Why not put it to work? And mm-hmm. and let's face it, Teslas are pricey vehicles. So if I could get one, the, 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 the challenge I have right now is, let's say I'm working all day and I say, okay, Tesla, you're part of the fleet. And it just takes off from well, my driveway and goes pick somebody up. <laughs> right, it goes to pick somebody up. And they spill their coffee in my car. I know. How do I know that? Because it could go to, it, it could drop them off at the airport and then go get the next person. And they get in and go, well, this car's a dump. Well, that's not my fault. I mean, am I supposed to return it home and only make one trip a day or inspect it on my lunch hour? I mean, hey, it, I, there's some logistic things I, that need to be worked out in this, in my opinion. I agree with you. I don't want to clean up somebody else's French fries from under the seat. <laughs> Well, you talk to enough Uber drivers, you'll tell them that a, a lot of them don't work those late night hours to pick up the drunks from the bar. As honorable as that is, many of them get a little <laughs> sick in your car. And, can you, can you, as I say, can you imagine getting up in the morning, running out to the car to go to work and, whoa, who's been in here? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or I was thinking you run out and it's not there. It's like almost <laughs> like having a teenager. Like, hey, the car's gone. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I forgot to turn off the app. I can't get to work now. My car is missing. I got to call another Tesla to come pick me up. <laughs> My stupid kid didn't charge it last night. <laughs> Brought it back with half a charge. <laughs> New battery anxiety disorder. <laughs> yeah. I, it's it's right. a great idea. I can I can certainly see that. Is it? Well, yeah. He was getting a lot of flack for not including Uber and Lyft and saying, well, you know, you have to own a Tesla to be part of the Tesla network. I'm like, well okay, uh, maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's not. I mean, choices are good if you've got Uber, Lyft, and Tesla network to choose from. Hey, you know, depending on the price, I may choose the Tesla. I suspect it's going to be more like the pricing of Uber XL. You're going to pay the premium for the premium vehicle. Well, I think it kind of, you know, it kind of decentralizes the the Uber kind of company. So you end up with a, a network of cars which he elon musk and everybody is going to benefit from because they're selling them yep but uh, you know everybody i don't know it's kind of a win-win i think if it works if in a perfect world uh, if, you know, if it worked out and nobody's vomiting or dropping french fries <laughs> in your car and and if it's if it's a higher end thing i suspect that's less likely to happen as well mm-hmm. be taking the rocket anyway so i'll be taking the rocket while <laughs> people, other people can drive my tesla yeah well you're going to take the rocket to new york but you still got to get you know <laughs> around the town in new york elon's going to own all of your travel <laughs> and energy needs <laughs> yeah. he's going to become the google of electricity 
All righty. Our next story is about drones and the National Park Service because they are cracking down. You know, as of this writing, by the time you hear this, if it's released on podcast form, your time clock will be up. But as of this <laughs> writing on Thursday, the 24th, you have six days left to remain that sick to to make that sick viral Statue of Liberty drone video. The FAA fun police have struck again. <laughs> I love the starting of that. The yeah, agency right. has already put restrictions on flying drones in around national parks, military bases, and airports. Now it has announced it's restricting drone flights near Department of Interior sites, including the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore, and Hoover Dam. These are popular filming locations for amateur drone videographers who like uploading the footage onto the internet with patriotic and uplifting musical accompaniment. The one of Mount Rushmore went on and on and on. Somebody needs to take a four minute video down to about a 40 second video in my opinion. <laughs> but, um, yeah. like, Oh, I didn't even watch that one. I'm yeah, no, I, I, sorry. <laughs> Soon pilots won't be able to fly their drones within 400 feet of these national landmarks. The FAA announcement states that the new regulations were inspired by requests from U.S. national security and law enforcement agencies. Other banned sites include the Boston National Historical Park, the Folsom Dam in Folsom, California. Wasn't that the one that recently flooded or busted over? Or mm, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember because they had a big drought and then it rained. And, anyway, the Glen Canyon Dam in Lake Powell, Arizona, the Grand Coulee Dam in Grand Coulee, Washington, and the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial in St. Louis, Missouri. And Shasta Dam in Shasta Lake, California. Some of these sites are already covered under pre-existing drone flight restrictions. What are your thoughts? If you had a drone, would that be one of the things you wanted to do is fly over the Statue of Liberty, for example? Sure, it sounds cool. Um, but yeah, I, the danger is inherent, is obvious. That, you know, what bad guys can do with, with that kind of just unchecked freedom to fly their drone around. On True. These. But, you know, you would think that especially the government, you would think that they would see money-making opportunity and say, sure, apply for an hour time limit or whatever. Apply and you Good. can you can have fly your drone around here, but you have to pay mm -hmm. and then you have you get this time slot. And you could have exclusive rights too, so you wouldn't have anybody else. Yeah, they kind of missed a money-making opportunity. The The other thing is, is the safety issue. And yeah. Craig, Craig and I have witnessed firsthand a drone going out of control and nearly taking somebody's yep. head off. So uh, when you're at these national parks, there are people there. There's going hey. to be this collection around the base of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. And yeah. I was going to bring up that same story that you're talking about. But I, especially when I saw the drone fly across the water all the way to the Statue of Liberty, impressive as the video is, there's a lot of people around there. And you can easily lose control, lose control of that drone yeah. because the guy is what, I don't know how, how far away, but he's not. He's not a, near it. So, yep. yeah, you could lose control of that thing and it would fall. And it, what Chuck was alluding to is when we were in the Dragon Con parade, I was in my truck driving and in front of me, I was like, that, there's oh, that idiot with a drone. And sure enough, I knew that it was a safety issue because I have a friend that does real estate videos and he's having to go through applying for a license and everything to do commercial drone, you know, video. And, so as soon as I saw that thing, he lost control, hit the crowd, and bounced off in, over a fence. And I'm like, you know, that's exactly why you don't want a bunch of drones flying around yeah, uh, with all those people and high density on the sidewalks and stuff. It's ridiculous. As cool as it is. I mean, uh, and, and <laughs> with, with more and more restrictions... And especially scenic places like that, where would you go to fly a drone anyway? In my in my in my safe airspace above my house and down. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much it. You got your own vertical column. Do you own the space above your house? You say not too high. You could hit an airplane. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know how far you can go. I mean, I've seen people put antennas and stuff up. I'm sure there's restrictions on how, how far you can go. How deep is your property that you own? To China? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's like, do, do you own mining rights or mineral rights below your house? How far? Yeah, how far can you dig? <laughs> this is interesting. I never thought about it quite before. Maybe I need to stop digging now. <laughs> Gone too far. Where, 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 <laughs> you digging yourself into a hole again? <laughs> yeah, I'm making a bunker under there. <laughs> I'm constantly doing that. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with some media corner stuff and definitely something in the geek library so stick around and we'll be right back
Mark your calendars and plan to attend PIY 2017. PIY is the Podcast It Yourself workshop, and it's happening in Phoenix, Arizona, October 28, 2017. This interactive workshop is being held for people who want to start a podcast or want to learn more about podcasting from experienced and respected podcasters. Learn about software, hardware, accessories, best practices, and more. And of course, we've got prize drawings to make podcasters weak in the knees. The workshop coincides with the long-awaited release of Podcasting for Dummies 3rd Edition. Authors T. Morris and Chuck Tomasi will be at DIY to answer questions and sign books. Oh, and it also happens to be T's birthday, so come help him celebrate after the workshop is done. You do not want to miss this event. Spaces are limited. Go to podcastingfordummies.com and sign up for PIY 2017. It doesn't get any simpler than that. podcastingfordummies.com and PIY 2017. Go. Now. This is Brian Brushwood, professional jackass and Ray on Tour. You're watching Chuck and Craig on Technorama. Except you're not watching, you're listening. But you're watching with your ears, because your ears have eyes. And you need to see a medical professional about your ear eyes. That ain't right. Here's my beer. And Jack will be speaking at PIY. I will. Just like this. <laughs> Yeah, pace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, be about keeping your sanity and about also about show content and all that. So yes, everyone should come out and have a good time. And just an all yeah. around fun podcast meetup. T's coming out. We got people from California coming out. We got podcasters and new podcasters and old podcasters, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm gonna I'm gonna Skype in. Starting tomorrow, the uh, Podcasting for Dummies book is now available on Amazon.com, October 2nd. I need my Ooh. desk bell. Ooh. Where is it? That's what they tell me anyway. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, if I buy a copy, will y'all sign it? <laughs> yes. I'm really hoping I get the uh, the author's comp copies while my parents are in town. Hey, That'd be cool. I think you're, you'll probably sign it like a uh, yearbook. I am signing your crack. You know, in the middle of the book. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never did that one, Craig. Everybody did that one. Oh, well. No, no I think that was just your school. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> Special thanks to our patrons that I mentioned earlier. We uh, we have a Patreon page if you want to contribute. We, are, we like to think of ourselves as creative content creators. <laughs> yeah. We kid ourselves. We, we try. We try. No, because, you know, this podcast doesn't pay the bills for itself. But uh, you can help with that. And it certainly does help. This show is brought to you by you. Thank you to people like Avner Braverman, Ben Vaughn, Mike Wills, Leon, John Noble. No, not that John Noble. I think I'm just going to start putting that in there every time. Because Ben and Keith are going to go, John Noble, yeah. a- Amy Bowen. <laughs> Chris MC, Alexis Duran, Saturday Morning Media, Steve Therian, and our wonderful Kyle Nishioka, one of our longtime listeners. A lot of these people have been listening for a very, very long time. Not everybody. Some new. Some have been around for a long time. So yeah, thank you very much. Lo- long-term PSTD. We'd like to include you on PTSD. this list every week. <laughs> STD? <laughs> That's Star Trek Discovery. Thanks. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash Technorama Podcast if you want to find out more for as little as a dollar a show. The cool thing is, when we go on vacation and miss like three quarters of the month, you don't pay anything. So it's up to us to keep going. That's the fun part. <laughs> All right. Over to the media corner. It's the circle of life, actually. Yeah. Where's our media corner thing? There it is. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Hey, where can I find some good information about music and TV and videos and things? Over here, in the media corner. You getting excited for Blade Runner 2049, Jack? Absolutely, yes. Although I have not yet seen Blade Runners 2 through 2048, so i got to get caught up. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to binge watch for a while. <laughs> what is that, uh, like 2046 movies you have to do? <laughs> It's okay because they're in like five minute shorts. So it's yeah. only about six months worth of video there. All right. Anyway, all, all, all silliness aside, <laughs> uh, Cowboy Bebop director 
Shinichiro Watanabe. I apologize for massacring that worse than I already did. Watanabe. No, there's no N in the beginning. (laughs) It's not Watanabe. That's a soup. (laughs) (laughs) Watanabe. Uh, It has a new project out a few days ago, as of this is reading, an anime prequel to the upcoming movie Blade Runner 2049. The 15-minute short, Blade Runner Blackout 2022, can be watched in its entirety on Crunchyroll. Isn't that one of those things on like Apple TV or Roku yeah. that you usually skip over? Right. <laughs> no, it's a No, it's on their channel. It's on uh, YouTube. Is it? No. I think Crunchyroll is its own it has its own app on on these different players. Yeah, that's It might be, but platform. Crunchyroll.com. I watched it on okay. I watched it on YouTube. Blackout 2022 is the third of three prequel shorts that connect the original film with its upcoming sequel. It takes place three years after the original movie when replicants are blamed for an electricity failure that throws cities into chaos. Watanabe is known for blending genres and creating worlds with distinct flavor like Cowboy Bebop's jazz slash Western mashup and Samurai Champloo's mix of hip hop and Japan's Edo period. Blackout 2022 remains faithful to the world of Blade Runner with a distinctive futuristic soundtrack Provided by Flying Lotus, Cowboy Bebop is perhaps best known is best known and all ugh, is perhaps the best yeah, known anime of all <laughs> time. And Watanabe has said pr- previously that the original Blade Runner heavily influenced his work as a director. I was careful about two things when creating this anime piece. Watanabe says in a teaser for the short, the first was to pay the greatest respect to the original Blade Runner. The second was to make this anime true to the world, but not an imitation. Blade Runner 2049 arrives in theaters October 6th. That's this Friday. Yes, it is. <laughs> in, thank you for that insight, Craig. That was wonderful. No. I've, I've not yet seen the other, so they're good. I haven't seen any of the three. Uh, I saw the yeah. um, I saw this I, the teaser. I haven't seen the actual film, so i got to go over to Crunchyroll and watch that. Yes, uh, I did. I enjoyed it. I saw all three of them. I saw the first two. They had li- it was live action, and this one is anime, of course. And it totally had the the Blade Runner uh, world kind of feel with you know the the cars in the air and the the big long uh, the big signs on the buildings. Wait, it this was one with the other I, two that we were talking about a couple weeks ago or last week, right? Yeah, and I mentioned that the next one's going to be released anime. them out this of order, it. though. This is 2022. What? Why did they release this one last? The other one was like 2046 and there's a 2038 or something. Well, it's the miracle of the internet. You can watch them in order. <laughs> it's kind of like the Star Wars movies. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I think it some maybe some of the plot stories will make sense in this way. I don't know. Um, but huh. uh, okay. they were kind of standalone stories. But I imagine when we watch the movie, some of the details will make sense. You know, kind of fit in there a little bit. But this is this is good, and I, I enjoyed it. I recommend it. Good stuff. Looking forward to it. We got to give a uh, quick review next yep. week after we watch it. Hopefully, I'll be able to get to the theater. Again, parents in town. Don't know if they're going to be watching Blade Runner with me or not. Mine would. Uh, they loved the first one, the first movie. Well, then, Dad, uh, he bought the final cut. You know, the the different version that one was in the theater, and he was such a fan of the original, he threw it away. I was like, wow. He said I threw it away. I was like, (laughs) You you threw the the recut away? He said, Yeah, it was nothing like uh no. I wanted the the he want he liked the ending in the first one and the one that was in the theatrical the theatrical one. Alrighty. So I was like, Well you couldn't you didn't have to throw it away, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) Tiffany, do you care to read a story from Engadget about Amazon? Okay. When it comes to the new TV shows that Amazon is focusing on, Jeff Bezos handed down a mandate to Amazon Studio Chief, excuse me, to Amazon Studios Chief Roy Price. Bring me Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, so they did. <laughs> wow. It appears Here's a DVD the, collection. <laughs> it appears that the studio is taking that seriously. They've announced three high concept science fiction series are in the works. Lazarus. Snow Crash and Ringworld. Wow, those aren't those won't be easy to do. Is Game of Thrones really considered sci-fi? 
Uh, no. Okay. No, I, <laughs> I think you wanted, but I think you wanted something fantasy. along that quality <laughs> genre. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Lazarus is based on a comic book series from creators Greg Ruka and Michael Lark. It's set in a distinct, distant future where the Earth is controlled by 16 families, each of which have a one person enforcer that works as an assassin called the Lazarus. Ruka and Lark will write and executive produce the show along with Angela Chen Kaplan. Hmm. Okay. I, I'm not familiar with the Lazarus story, but go on. There's more There's, than we have. Then we have Snow Crash, based on Neil Stevenson's famous novel, yeah. is also set in Earth of the Future, in which the main character, hero protagonist, is a pizza delivery boy. But <laughs> by night... Philip J. Fry. <laughs> he's a warrior. <laughs> In a virtual reality called the Metaverse. This series is being co-produced with Paramount Pictures with Joe Cornish and Frank Marshall as executive producers. That's oh, a great book. That is a, yeah, I don't know if you guys have read that one. That's that's great. I started, but I got interrupted. And I don't remember why, and I don't remember why I never went back, but I believe I have this on Audible, and I now I can finish. Or if it's coming to <laughs> Amazon, I better darn well. Wow. Uh, finally, there's Ringworld. It's based on the popular sci-fi series from the 1970s by Larry Neven. Louis Gridley Wu is celebrating his 200th birthday on Earth, and he's bored. When he's given (laughs) the chance to go on a voyage deep into space to explore an alien construction, he doesn't hesitate to sign up. The series will be co-produced by MGM. I'm interested in that one. So, yeah, Snow Crash and Ringworld uh, has got my attention. I'm not familiar with Lazarus. Yeah, same here. And I think that it, the challenge is going to be like any other literary brought to the screen is, can you do it justice, A, on a budget, and B, so that fans accept it, rather than going, you know, you you, you screwed the pooch on that one, or you know, that that's not at all where we were going. Because uh, yeah. that's inevitable when whenever you take a literary work, going back to the men in the high castle, when Amazon sure. did that, a lot of people were picking it apart going, uh, that's not the right character and that's not the right place. And they switched this and I mean, it was a good story. It was an adaptation of it almost or a, a derivative of that story, but it, well, I, I throw the, I throw it out there again. I throw this point out here. It, do you want to see the exact thing that you you've read or do you want to see something that's, um, uh, that, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, um, you know, that, that upholds the the material, but maybe it's changed up a little bit. Right. It's, it's like Star Trek discovery is based on, you know, the Star Treks that we've known all along by Gene Roddenberry, but hey, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has yes. been a little different in each of its iterations. And I'm fine with that as long as it's, uh, you know, aware of the source material and as, you know, good with that i didn't have to be the same stupid story I mean, i'm down with what something do you, what do you guys think hitchhiker's guide is a good example of straying a little too far though the, you know the film i think uh specifically the ending mm-hmm. i think it strayed a little too far but um but yeah i mm-hmm. with snow crash that's the only one actually i've, I've actually never even read ring world I, I don't know if i should hang my head about that or not but snow crash you have these three main characters uh the hero and YT and Raven, who's kind of the antagonist. I mean, these three characters are so iconic. I mean, they, you've got to do them right. And then the rest of it, I can forgive, but as long as you, you get them right and then you get the main story points. And I'm, I'm not one who reads much, but I am a fan of the Amazon series, uh, Man in the High Castle. So I don't know its source material. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed the show, whether it's... Um, you Did know, you watch both two, seasons? Yes. Okay, absolutely. I haven't finished second season yet. Yeah. I got to get back to that. Yep, we're definitely definitely caught up. And I've had people tell me the story from the from the book and how it how it is different, but still it's it's captivated me. Yeah, I I think they did a good job in season yeah. 1. The and that was what was based on the original book. Mm-hmm. Season 2, they're kind of doing the the Game of Thrones thing going, well, there was no more source material to go for. So we're making it up at this point. <laughs> it's like mash. Yeah. yeah. And well, I, and by the way, Jack, I do agree with you with hitchhikers as far as the film go. I enjoyed the film, but yeah, you're right. It was a little, little, little too different. Right at the end. I think that, that, you know, ring world could be done in this day and age because, uh, you've got the different races and the different species, 
which we've seen done with motion capture, stop action, whatever, CGI, whatever you want to call it, to to bring these different life forms to life in a realistic manner. So it it could be done. It could be done. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the story more so than the technology. Hey, well, one, I'm a fan of sci-fi, and if they're going to put out some sci-fi to watch, I'm down with that. <laughs> True. It'll probably increase their uh, ratings to the content as well. So mm-hmm. We all know that uh, when it comes to Netflix versus Amazon in terms of where are you going to go for your video time, I'd say the majority hey, the of way, people, it's it's like the Uber Lyft thing. It, yeah. I, I'm... Yeah, by the way, um, one of the, I was just thinking, uh, one one bit of source material you don't want to screw with would have been Lord of the Rings, which I don't think they changed a whole lot, the original movies, to the books. Right. And including but, The Hobbit, well, they, they did stretch it out a little bit. But yeah, that, well, that yeah not, I don't think Greg meant The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was just talking about the original <laughs> three Lord of the Rings. I, you know, they didn't stray too much from that, and I was like, that's that's something if... If you just strayed too much and screwed something up and made Gandalf, I don't know, have a partner, I don't know, but it would be really weird. Let's give him wings. <laughs> wings or something. And people would have been up in arms all over that. Gandalf the beige. <laughs> I was just going to change his color too. Gandalf the fuchsia. <laughs> Gandalf the fuchsia. <laughs> righty. That's uh, that's it for the media library. We're going to turn to the geek library. Buckle up. Because we got a couple of stories and we're running out of time fast. So we're going to... You know, that kind of sounds like what Keith just gave me. What is it? This what one. What do you mean? Oh. No, not that. What did he, get? he gave me the... Um, where'd it go? The theremin one. Hmm. Ah, now I can't find that darn thing. Who's was wasting this one? time this now? One. This. Hmm. Yeah. This reminds me of Men in Black. I, I don't know. It's like space, yeah, it that's does. the Space Mountain music. <laughs> yeah. it always sounds like that's Space Mountain. That's what it is. I haven't been on Space Mountain in a long time. Well, they've cha- you know, they've changed it. They changed Aww. it in like the early 2000s. And yeah, this sounds like the new. Uh, I think that's probably the last time I was on it was <laughs> two thousand. They straight they strayed from the source material, but it's still <laughs> spaced out. <laughs> so the flying cookie's gone. Just spoiler. we are we are <laughs> we are fans of Futurama, and uh, Craig has found us a Vimeo at This came out uh, three years ago, so pardon us for being a little slow, but it is a short thirty second clip on a three D rendering of the Futurama starting or part of the Futurama starting. And they really, really went overboard on some of this. Because there's another link in our show notes that you can find that uh, which, brings you to how they think, made it. Yeah, what? and I think it's it's almost even cooler to watch. The making of? The way they yeah, layer in the lighting and the shading. Yeah, because you start the Yeah. Yeah. The, and then they play the video at the end. But yeah, so cool. many buildings in these shots. It's crazy. But I, I think my favorite part is the ad of mom, you know, mom's robot oil. <laughs> they layered yeah. in Meryl Streep's face. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was priceless. I'm like, oh my gosh, I never <laughs> thought Meryl Streep looked like mom. <laughs> sure, she could do it. And you know what? I think we need a Futurama movie. I think we need a Futurama, a, a, a yeah. live action Futurama movie. But don't do the dog episode. I, would, I can't even handle it. How about the cat episode? Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember, well, you know, Remember the live action YouTube uh, video we saw of the uh, Futurama? Where they were the reading episode? the script? The episode. No, no, no. The episode we saw with the full makeup and oh, the Oh, yes. They were, the, the, yeah, that never happened, but they were, yeah, kind of kicking well, that down the street. Yeah, and it looked it looked pretty cool. I mean, but it, it, could, it obviously needed more polish. But I was like, after watching that, I was, I was kind of convinced that we, they could pull off a movie. I think there's enough fan base to do it. Mm-hmm. They have to Maybe. get the right story. And like I said before, live action, uh, motion capture, you could have somebody <laughs> going along as Bender. <laughs> yeah. And Craig, this last one just gets my goat. I, I can't say <laughs> enough about it. the QVC hosts that were debating whether Earth's moon is a planet or a star. <laughs> and hey, 
it, I called Harrison in and I said, Harrison, watch this. So he started watching it. And even he was trying to walk out of the room because he was, <laughs> he, he said, this just hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and he's what, four, 15 now? 16? How old 15. is he? 15. 15. 15. And it, this goes to show just how sad our education system is when, when this lady can't grasp the fact she says oh, somebody has to google it and then somebody google offset goes and googles it and says it's a natural satellite she goes i don't even know what that means i don't think that's right no that's not right it it's, and the guy is is offset the moon's a star right it's, no no a- the moon is a planet is what he says yeah. oh oh this oh, you're no, right they, this hurts to watch it's only like said, a minute oh, and a half long but it is i know what it was they said oh the sun that's a star right and they, they were trying to yeah, quantify the sun, too. Debating whether the sun is a star, the moon is a planet. I think even somewhere in there they mentioned that it was made out of cheese. I was just like, <laughs> oh, it was it, it was. I, thought, I like how she... Are you going to play it? Uh, no, I'll probably get in trouble for replaying it because YouTube <laughs> well, will I stop it, me. She even went through... I remember back in school, and she, uh, she started mem- remembering the planets. She said oh. Venus... There's, and she goes Saturn, Neptune, and that other one with the ring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, just stick to selling garments. And well, crap. Jupiter has rings. Uranus yeah, has Uranus, rings. Yeah. Hey, good news, uh, Elon Musk. We got a couple of contenders. We can hire. <laughs> Test pilots. <laughs> Test dummies. If it doesn't work. Yes. Eh. We're going to send you out to that moon or planet or star or whatever with, that thing with, is with the rings <laughs> <laughs> you pick where you want to yeah, go i mean it is a minute and a half and it was it felt like five it did it felt like kidding. five minutes where like i can't believe they're still going on about this it's just terrible <laughs> so if you want some pain and suffering and laugh at other people's ignorance now i know different people have different expertise but there's some foundation knowledge you learned in school that hey it, it, I've been a computer guy for a long time and I had to remember remind myself and other people, Hey, the people we're helping, they're not computer people. They're doctors, lawyers, whatever. Yeah. I get that. Mm-hmm. yeah everybody's got a different profession, but you're right. There's gotta be some <laughs> foundational knowledge. This you is know, like grade school stuff. I, I have half a mind to do an interview like this at next year's dragon con and walk up and ask people common questions about, and stuff like that. It what what is the moon? Is it a planet? Is it a star? And and see what they respond with. Just to see what it, I get the feeling that the sec, segment of people that attend a con like that are going to be a little more slanted towards that. So maybe we'll have to ask them other things about biochemistry. Yeah, they go to another something. part of the city and ask them same questions. Right. You, you know what? You need to make a sign that says, you know, awkward science questions. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Trivia. Argument science trivia. Yeah. Oh, and I yeah. we were listening to the radio yesterday and we have an idea for uh our next live show next year. So uh, Donna has written it down. It's it's based on the public radio segment, this, that, or the other thing, where they, they said, Okay, our topics, the two people competing, three people competing. Was it three people, Donna, or two? Two people competing. And, and one the answer could potentially be an obsolete Slurpee flavor from 7-Eleven. <laughs> okay. Um, a game they played on Double Dare. And what was the third? And, and Yankee Candle Scents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they'd, they, they'd do say, uh, a game like Ice Cream Drop. <laughs> Which one of October, those three? Hey. October surprise. Right. Yankee yeah. Candle? <laughs> yeah <we're, laughs> so I was thinking we could do something like that with, uh, you know, is this a Star Trek species, a D and D character or you know, something like just come up with these names and just let people guess. You know? Right. Or a pharmaceutical. Uh, oh, pharmaceutical would be good too. <laughs> or historical figure. Praxis. <laughs> Praxis the barbarian. <laughs> is it, is it a, uh, Klingon moon? Is it? <laughs> is it something to lower your blood pressure? <laughs> I take Praxis one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Ask your doctor if Praxis is right for you. <laughs> Do not take with Romulan ale. You may already have Praxis and not know it. 
<laughs> Sorry, I actually stole that from an idea that we had on our conference call today of this week. It's kind of funny. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you very much, Jack and Tiffany. Yes. Thank you for having the three of us. Yes, thank the you. The three of us, that's right. We got we, or two and a half. What are we, what are we calling this? <laughs> She's just a tiny human. She's there. Yeah. And Craig, which one of these two questions are we asking, or are we throwing it out there and let them answer either? Well, I don't know. Both of them came to me, so... Uh, I figured why not? I would just throw two of them in there. Okay, well, let, uh, let's start the first one because we might run out of ideas next week. We'll take okay, the first one, fine. save the second one for next week. Okay. What is the most useless piece of knowledge that you are proud to carry around? <laughs> and and I oh, would add to I that, so and you, you pull this out at, at, at occasions just to show <laughs> it's a useless piece of knowledge. Now, yes. I, I, I'm going to, the first thing that comes to mind, aside from why do we use the letter I in our for loops when we program, I, I love that one, by the way, and I'll explain that later. Iteration. No, there's, there is a oh. historical reason for it, and it's not because of the width of railroad tracks. <laughs> That's an urban myth. Um, the what? The other one that, oh. that comes to mind is old phone numbers, friends that I used to call in high school. I still have their phone numbers memorized. And I, there's no reason for it. They don't live there anymore. <laughs> there's, But yet, I still have like three or four of these kicking around in my head. Like, I'm going to call them up any day and go, okay, 225-3117. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, no. I don't even think their parents are there anymore. Although that would be fun to find out, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been accused of having way more useless knowledge than I need. Right. So we I, have, all do. I have to think about it. I have to think about this one hard. Um, I do remember some old phone numbers. Uh, there's a, a lot combination. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot combination I can think of at an old job, which I'm sure that lock's nowhere near there anymore. <laughs> yeah, like your high school <laughs> locker combination. What good is that going to do you now? Yeah. <laughs> Aside from that dream that you have every once in a while where you can't remember your locker combination. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Anything come to Everybody. mind, Jack? Um, oh, yeah. I'm Cliff Clavin, you know, with the useless knowledge. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. I do remember old phone numbers that I haven't called in 30 years. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think it's mostly like uh, uh, band trivia and rock trivia. Sometimes, actually, I'll start talking to someone about it, and I'll kind of hold back because I'm embarrassed about how much <laughs> I – about how deep I can go. <laughs> like some, you know, just knowledge about No, people. I think you hold back because you don't want to blow their mind. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, anything come to mind? Really doesn't right now. No. Oh, come on, women no. remember everything. There's got to be something about Jackie did like five years ago that <laughs> you're still holding on to. No, I, I seriously, <laughs> my brain, I don't hold on to stuff. It just goes in and out or down to my belly right now. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'd have to think really, really Should hard. Should we go back to Jack and see what Tiffany yeah. remembers? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Let's Honey, where are the keys? <laughs> Well, I remember. you know, being a nurse, she rattles off these 25 syllable words. And I'm just like, I wouldn't even remember the first three syllables. I'm just like, if, if, that, if that patient was my responsibility, they would just be dead. Hey, what's wrong with this patient? Uh, Paramaya what? Uh, they've got a hurdy in their thing, you know. I think Jack just raising his hands, just backing off. I'm sorry, I'm out. <laughs> Backs up into the cornfield. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, her that kind of stuff blows my mind. Of course, that's not useless. That's very useful knowledge. <laughs> you need that when you're at work. <laughs> There's just right. like old IP addresses kicking around in my head that wow. the systems from my former employer. Uh, um, it's like why, why? It, the, the, those Sun workstations are gone for 20 years. I don't know why I have uh, this information. <laughs> some, yeah, sometimes I think of old code I wrote. I'm talking like basic in the '64 era. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I go. Oh, yeah, I remember doing something like that with a loop, you know, or something. I don't know. Just The one that's like even that. scarier is when your fingers remember something that your brain doesn't. You ever oh, do, that? I do that? Yes. I, 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 I have an Apple IIe over here is to my right side, and I fired it up one day, and I was playing a game, and I got stuck, and I broke out, and I went, oh, I'm at the, I'm at the like, machine language prompt. It's not the normal thing where you, and you can't hit a key to reboot. But there was my fingers just naturally did this three kind of a control alt delete for the apple and it rebooted and I I I don't even know what I hit. <laughs> it's just 
It just went. <laughs> you know, the Vulcan nerve pinch on this thing. It went, whoa, it restarted. What did I hit? What did I hit? <laughs> right. Yeah, I was thinking of that old games, actually. I could probably sit right down and go th- way through, way too far into games I haven't played in 30 years and remember how to get to the, the end of the level. If it's if it requires motor control, though, right, that's harder because your brain knows what it should do, but you, you know the, the muscle memory is gone. Right. I, I remember a lot of patterns from playing Tron, and if I stepped up to Tron machine, I couldn't execute them with the timing I once did. That would be tough. Wait a minute. The Tron... Video game? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go find one one day when we're together. I'm gonna school you. There's on that also game. there's also useless trivia that I have forgotten that I know I forgot. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in South Dakota, and my buddy Mark throws me his Rubik's cube. He goes, he says, "Can you fix this?" I said, "No, I can't. <laughs> I can't even get the first side anymore without 45 minutes of effort." And I used to be able to solve this thing in like four minutes. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, which is an eternity these days, the way the kids do them. Yeah, right. I, I, and and the funny thing is, I taught him how to do a Rubik's cube mm. over the phone. Wow. <laughs> okay, what colors do you see? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and he still remembers, and I don't. I said, "Call me sometime, uh, will you?" <laughs> we'll check your phone support skills. <laughs> you're right. All right, we have run way over this week. Hey. Did you know the sun is a star? I did just remember. Stop. That Stop. Stop. <laughs> That's not useless. That's basic knowledge. I think, I think that our question of the week goes very well with that last video. Thank you very actually, much. Actually, Sherlock would disagree with you, but we'll just. Do it. Very good. Yes, that's true. Let's let's play this out. Thank you once again, Jack and Tiffany, for joining us. Hi, Thank you. Thanks. And Hi, we, we appreciate your support. There are many ways to get in touch with us and show your love. You can call us on the listener line, 707-530-2428. Call us, leave us a voicemail. What are your useless knowledge things that you remember? We haven't heard from a lot of you in a long time. It'd be really nice. Email us, technorama chuckchat.com. Next weekend, we will put the question of the week on Facebook and the other social networks so we can get in touch with you if you want to respond that way or find those links through our uh, webpage. Chuckchat.com slash Technorama. Don't forget about Patreon. We appreciate that. And as always, Craig, would you give me a binary high five? One zero one. Poof. Smooth. And an extra one for the little no, Megan. No. No. Thank you, Facebook people, for watching, and we will talk to you again next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See you later. Don't take off your...